Hi guys, welcome to our um, MPLab XC8 tutorial for Absolute Beginner series. This is tutorial 22, the analog to digital converter and LCD display with MPLab code configurator. In tutorial 5, interfacing LCD display with PIC microcontroller. In tutorial 6, the analog to digital converter, we use the PIC 18F peripheral library. But the challenge is microchip is phasing out the PIC 18F peripheral library, which is no longer included in XC8 compilers from version 1.35. Now you'll have to download and install them separately into your compiler. And they are now called legacy peripheral library. So if you go to microchip website, under the normal MPLab XC8 compilers page, under the download tab, We've got the latest MPLab compilers. If you scroll down, you'll see peripheral libraries. This is MPLab code configurator. Now in this section, legacy peripheral libraries. This is where you can download the old PIC 18F peripheral library. You'll have to download it separately and install it in your current X8 compiler that you are using. And once you have installed it, it's always good to link it. So if you come to your project, you right click properties under XC8 linker. And if you scroll down, you're going to see link in peripheral library. If you want to use the peripheral library with your current compiler. At the moment with the current MPLab code configurator version three, the LCD display is not included in the device resources. So we're going to use an external LCD library supplied with microchip PICDEM2 plus demonstration board source code. If you open microchip PICDEM2 plus demonstration board source files, there is an LCD library which is compatible with HD44780 LCD controller LCD. It can be used with PIC16F and PIC18F series. So all you need to do is to include these two files in your project. So the first thing we're going to do, add existing item, then we're going to locate our files. Going to start with lcd.h, we're going to copy it into our local directory, select. Under source files, we're going to do the same. We're going to add the source file, select. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to configure our system clock module. In this example, we're going to use the internal oscillator of the PIC microcontroller and we're going to disable the MCLR pin. So we're going to use the internal oscillator. We're going to use 8 meg. And in this section, we're going to disable the MCLR pin and we're going to configure port B pin as digital input output on reset. And the rest of the configurations, we can leave them at their default values. Our LCD will be connected to port B. So we're going to enable all the port B as output pins. To do this, we're going to click on pin module. Let us enable all the pins on port B. All going to be output pins. If you open the lcd.h file. So in this library, this is where you can change the default LCD connections. As we're going to connect our LCD to port B, so we're going to select LCD port B. If you want to connect your LCD to port C, then you can change port C and you'll have to change all these individual pins as well. If you're going to connect it to any other pin, whether it's port D, then this is where you can change your default connection. Here you can specify the number of display lines of your LCD. As we are using a 2 lines by 16 LCD. So we're going to specify two lines and 16. And once you have specified your default LCD connection, then you can open the LCD.C. Here you must not forget to specify the tri-state register that you're going to use. If you connect your LCD to port B, as in our case, then you'll have to change tri-state B. So these are the functions that we can use with this LCD library. The first thing is LCD initialize. This routine initializes the LCD driver and it says this routine must be called before any other LCD routine is called. The next routine is LCD put character. 
This routine writes a character to LCD at current cursor position. The next is LCD put command. This sends an S key command to the LCD in instruction mode. The next LCD routine is LCD put string. This routine writes string to LCD at current cursor position. LCD write enable. This function writes the specified enable to the LCD. And LCD go to. This function position the cursor at the specified line and color. So let us configure the analog to digital converter module with MPLAB code configurator. All you need to do is select the ADC from the device resources. Double click ADC. These are the few configurations that we can select. You can select the clock source. This is to select the clock frequency used for internal synchronization of the ADC converter. It also affects the duration of the conversions. The clock is critical to produce the fastest but also accurate analog to digital conversion. In this example, we're going to use the oscillator frequency divided by 2. And here you can specify the acquisition time. The time to complete one bit conversion is defined as TAD. One full 10 bit conversion requires 11 TAD period. For correct conversions, the appropriate TAD specification must be met. So you'll have to check your device data sheet to get the ADC convention requirement. For the PIC 18F26K20, the minimum TAD is 0.7 microseconds and maximum is 25 microseconds. So in this example, we're going to select two TAD. You can choose to write justify or left justify your result. In this example, we're going to write justify our result. The positive reference, you can either use an external reference. In this example, we're going to use the VDD. And the negative reference, we're going to use also the VSS. If you want to enable the ADC interrupt, then you'll have to tick on this checkbox. And the last thing we have to do is to select the analog channel that we're going to use. We're going to use analog channel 0 of our PIC microcontroller. So we're going to click on the first channel to enable it. You can see on the device package, the selected channel is displayed. You can also customize this name. If you click on pin module, this is our RA0. You can also customize it with your own name. In this example, we're going to leave the default name, channel analog 0. And that's all, guys. That's all for these configurations. All we need to do is to click on generate generate click save okay everything was generated successfully these are the files that were generated by our mplab code configurator if you click on adc.h these are the functions that we can use with your adc module the first one is adc initialize it says this routine initializes the adc and says this routine must be called before any other adc routine is called the next routine is SDC start conversion. It says this routine is used to select the desired channel for conversion. And ADC is conversion done. This routine is used to determine if conversion is completed. When conversion is complete, routine returns true. It returns false otherwise. So this is a simple example how you can use these routines. The first thing we're going to declare an unsigned 16 integer variable. They named it converted value, then initialize our ADC module, then ADC start convention, then you're going to specify the channel that will be converted. Then you can check whether the convention is done, then you can read the converted result. Let's go to our main C file and write our simple program to read the voltage across our potentiometer and display it on our LCD display. This is our main C file. The first thing we did is to include our lcd.h and include stdo.h library. Then we created a simple function to create delay in seconds. And these are the three variables that we're going to use in this project. In unsigned 16 integer variable, we're going to name it converted value. Then we declared a floating point variable, we name it voltage. And a character variable, we name it buffer. And the first thing is to initialize our LCD. The system initialize is generated by the MPLAB code configurator. If you navigate to code declaration, 
you're gonna see the system initialize initialize the pin manager the oscillator and the adc so we don't have to initialize the sdc is already initialized in this function we're gonna call our lcd initialize and the first thing we're gonna use the lcd put command to turn off the cursor the first thing we're gonna display on our lcd adc with mcc on the first line to jump your cursor to a specified location on your lcd we're gonna say lcd go to first colon on the second line we're gonna write 10 potentiometer on analog zero and after two second delay then we're gonna clear our display and in our while one loop the first thing we're gonna start our adc convention adc start convention then we're gonna specify the analog channel that we're gonna convert we're gonna check if the convention is finished then we're gonna read the convention result and store it in our converted variable then we're gonna say voltage equals to converted value times 5 divided by 1023 this is to convert the adc count into a voltage then we're gonna display on our lcd lcd put string voltage this function sprint f is used to convert the floating point number our voltage into a string so that we can be able to display it on our lcd display we're gonna convert to string and we're gonna round it to three decimal point number then we're gonna display our voltage on our lcd and we're gonna jump to the first line and this will be repeated over and over again so let us build our project the build is successful let's go to our simulation right click open our project pen.x file open run display adc with mcc on the second line 10 port on analog zero and then it's gonna start displaying the voltage across our potentiometer so if you will change the value you can see the voltage is displayed accordingly let us connect a voltmeter across this potentiometer so that we can compare the values display on our voltmeter with the value displayed on our lcd display stop under the virtual instrument select dc voltmeter We're gonna connect our voltmeter across our potentiometer we're gonna need the ground okay let us run our simulation again okay you can see our voltmeter is reading 2.25 which is also displayed on our lcd display if i turn the knob of our potentiometer you can see the value changes accordingly and this is gonna be the end of this tutorial to download the source code of this project please visit our website and don't forget to subscribe to this youtube channel to receive more tutorials in the future and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you